The book, Good to Great by James Collins, explores just that. How do you take a good company and make it into a great company? We follow James and his research team as they spend five years looking over the public records of many different companies looking for, hey, what are those decision points these great companies make in their transition to greatness? Now, he has lots of interesting concepts, so we get to ask ourselves, hey, what value can we blow out of this book? And are you a hedgehog? I think this book is famous for how it takes very complex subjects and breaks it down into simple one-liners. So we are going to look at the hedgehog concept, the level five leader, and how to get people on and off the bus. So we'll start off with the hedgehog concept, or you need to do something extremely, extremely well. You need to be the best at it in the business. And if not, you need to go find something else. There is a parable that goes with that, which I'll have the link below. And it really goes into, there's lots of companies, the good companies go around and are looking at all these different ways, but the hedgehog knows exactly what it's good at and does it again and again and again, and doesn't need to do other things because it is so good. Then he goes into the concept of the three different circles. So you have what you're really good at and what the company excels at doing what your company is passionate about doing, what they're striving to do. And hey, can you make money doing this? And if you can find that overlap between all three circles, those are the values you need to look at to drive success and make sure you're doing things that only fall into all three of those categories. And he has lots of examples of things you wouldn't think people would be passionate about. He also provides a tiering mechanism discussing how leaders perform on different levels. And his level five, his optimum leader that he sees in all these great companies, share some of the same value. To help explain the difference between good and great leaders, he brings up the windows and mirrors concept. So a great leader, when something bad happens, will use the mirror and look back on himself to say, hey, I didn't do something right. I did something wrong. Whereas if something is happening that is good, they are really quick to attribute it to someone else or even to dumb luck. Whereas the good but not great leader is going to attribute all the problems to other people and attribute all the good things to their own leadership. And this I versus we has kind of popped up a lot recently is a big thing that they found between the good companies and the great companies. He also calls into question a lot of the rock star leaders, the CEOs who go into a company saying, hey, I'm so great, I did huge turnarounds, we're gonna do lots of different things because of me, 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 me. Those companies tend to stay good, but they usually don't become these sustained great companies. Whereas a humble leader will be more likely to drive continued and sustained results. Finally, he brings up, you need to get the right people on the bus. You need to find the people who are passionate, motivated, disciplined, and are ready to do whatever it takes to bring the company to the next level. Then you can worry about whether they have the right experiences, the right skill sets, and if they don't, don't worry, you can train them in those. That is something all these great companies have in common. They're able to find people and develop them into exactly what they need for their company to move forward and do great things. Now that we have the right people on the bus, we have to get the wrong people off the bus. These are the people who might have all the experience in the world, might be excellent at what they do, but are not fitting in the culture and trying to kind of swing your hedgehog concept the wrong way. This doesn't mean we need to go out and just start firing people. There were some good companies that were almost addicted to firing as many people as possible to help drive up profits. But the great companies were really good at retraining and refitting people into roles that they were passionate about that really benefited the company. And in that way, they got the right people on the bus moving forward. Some critiques for this book. Some of the examples are a little dated. When he talks about how great Circuit City is, I cringe a little bit. He also is discussing Wells Fargo, and we all know there's lots of problems that they were going into as well. So that throws you back a little bit and shows you how dated it is a little. It also sometimes feels like the examples are too generalized, so you feel like suddenly you're a level five leader because, oh yeah, I really did this and this and this. I'm good, I'm excellent, I'm on the path to success. Um, great way to sell books, but kind of I run into some of those problems. So if you get past the datedness and the generalizations, I do feel it discusses a lot of the common business lexicon of concepts you should think about as you're building a successful business and looking to make your business into something better.
If you're interested in this book and want to help support the channel, the affiliate link is below. In the meantime, have a great one. Bye. <laughs>